Whence we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, Lamb of our salvation. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. Blessed, Blessed is the one who considers the poor. In the day of trouble, the Lord delivers him. The Lord protects him and keeps him alive. He is called blessed in the land. You do not give him up to the will of his enemies. The Lord sustains him on his sickbed. In his illness, you restore him to full health. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. My enemies say of me in malice, When will he die and his name perish? But when one comes to see me, he utters empty words, while his heart gathers iniquity. When he goes out, he tells it abroad. All who hate me whisper together about me. They imagine the worst for me. They say a deadly thing is poured out on him. He will not rise again from where he lies. Even my close friend in whom I trusted, who ate my bread, has lifted his heel against me. But you, O Lord, be gracious to me, and raise me up that I may repay them. By this I know that you delight in me. My enemy will not shout in triumph over me. But you have upheld me because of my integrity, and set me in your presence forever. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Amen and amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. As for me, I said, O Lord, be gracious to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. Our first reading this evening is from Acts chapter 8. Yet the Most High does not dwell in houses made by hands, as the prophet says. Heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. What kind of house will you build for me, says the Lord? Or what is the place of my rest? Did not my hand make all these things? You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did your fathers not persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, who you received, who you received the law as delivered by angels, and did not keep it. Lord, have mercy on us. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Second Timothy chapter three. But understand this that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lover of, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness, but denying its power. Avoid such people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading tonight is from Mark chapter 14. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him to them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, and he sought an opportunity to betray him. And on the first day of the unleavened bread, when they had sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where will you have us go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? And he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the master of the house, 
The teacher says, where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? And he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready, there prepared for us. And the disciples set out and went to the city and found it just as he had told them as they prepared the Passover. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve. And as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful and to say to him one after another, Is it I? He said to them, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. For the Son of Man goes as, as it is written of him. But woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. And they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. And he came the third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough, the hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. And immediately while he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a crowd with swords and clubs, from the chief priests and the scribes and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him and lead him away under guard. And when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and he kissed him. And they laid hands on him and seized him. Lord, have mercy on us. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In you, O Lord, do I put my trust. Leave me not, O Lord my God. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. Deliver me, O Lord my God, for you are the God of my salvation. Rescue me from my enemies. Protect me from those who rise against me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Even though the heart of every man is filled with deceit and treachery because of our sin, God still loves them. God still wants to hand over the gift of salvation freely through the means of grace, his word, and the sacraments. The verb the Bible uses, which we translate as betray, can have the simple meaning of to hand over. Jesus was handed over into the hands of sinful men so that God could work the salvation of the world through the life, death, and resurrection of his Son. Despite the conspiracy of Judas and the so-called religious leaders of the Jews, despite our many betrayals because of our corrupt, sinful nature, God, instead of punishment and death, handed over his Son in our place. Thence for us, the Lord hands over the forgiveness of sins, eternal life, and salvation for all believers for the sake of Christ alone. Let that truth grant us comfort tonight as we continue living in this disruption and uncertainty of this global pandemic crisis. Let us all be reassured that God is not punishing us. He punished his son for us. Then Judas Iscariot, who was one of the twelve, went to the chief priests in order to betray him. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, and he sought an opportunity to betray him. And when it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they were reclining at table and eating, Jesus said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be sorrowful to say to him, one after another, Is it I? He said to him, It is one of the twelve, one who is dipping bread into the dish with me. It's interesting to think that each one of those twelve was dipping bread into the dish with him. Every year, when we read of Judas's betrayal, we feel several different emotions, anger and outrage at such an evil schemer, but also sorrow and guilt. As we put ourselves in the apostles' seats when they asked, 
Is it I, Lord? Judas Iscariot. A name that has gone down in history as one of the most detested human beings to ever live. A name synonymous with evil, spoken in the same breath as Adolf Hitler or Pol Pot. A name attached to things which are reprehensible. A Judas goat is a trained goat used in animal herding. The Judas goat is trained to associate with sheep or cattle, leading them to the specific destination that the farmer wants. In stockyards, a Judas goat will lead sheep to slaughter while its own life is spared. In Dante's fictional Inferno, the eternally frozen ninth circle of hell, its deepest point, is reserved for Satan and for Judas, who spends eternity being slowly chewed upon in the mouth of the devil. Now here was a man with great potential. He had to have been or Jesus would not have selected him as an apostle. Judas had a choice, but he made the incorrect one. Nevertheless, the potential remained. Here was a man that had a promising start, but he finished with a resounding and crushing defeat, forever known as the man who betrayed our Lord. And how did it come to this? Where did he turn down the wrong path? And more importantly, can it happen to us? St. Luke described Judas in the book of Acts. He was one of our number, and he shared in his ministry. How awesome would it have been for Judas to travel with Jesus, to sit at his feet, to listen to him teach, to have the honor of carrying the money bag, to provision Jesus and the others, to give alms to the poor, and as Jesus healed and preached to them, to see the dead raised, to see demons exercised, that would be the most remarkable life a follower of Jesus could lead, don't you think? But despite all that Judas saw, at some point, things went horribly, horribly wrong. And he began to witness these things with betraying eyes. Because Judas had another love. His eyes were focused somewhere else. We got the first glimpse of this in John chapter 12, when a woman poured perfume on Jesus' feet, St. John reported, But Judas Iscariot, one of the disciples, he who was about to betray him, said, Why was this ointment not sold for 300 denarii and given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. And having charge of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put in it. But it wasn't merely the money that was the problem. But Judas is love of money. Scripture cautions us, for the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil. It is through this craving that some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pangs. Judas was deceived into thinking that money led to happiness and to contentment. But he was wrong. The love of money led Judas to betray Jesus. Now, when we looked around at each other on Sunday morning in the sanctuary, we didn't think of anybody as being a Scrooge McDuck, rolling in dough and stingy and greedy to obtain more. Money was Judas's bane. Yours and mine is probably something else. It's not the money per se, but it's the fact that whatever our sin or our vice is, it takes our eyes off of Jesus and turns something else into our God. All sin, ultimately, ultimately, is a sin against the first commandment. You shall have no other gods. Money had become Judas' first love. Therefore, 30 pieces of silver were the price of buying his betrayal of Jesus. And as bad as his betrayal was, there was still hope for Judas. And it appeared that Judas may have been on the road to recovery and even forgiveness. Judas was remorseful. He returned the money. But in the end, he could not believe that he could be forgiven. And so he hung himself in despair. That's the real tragedy here, isn't it? Judas didn't have to die this way. He had the cure for his betraying eyes right there in front of him. But he refused to see it. Where are your eyes fixed today? What has your attention? What might lead you to betray your Savior? But you say, that would never happen to me. 
And that actually would be our first mistake. It can happen. In fact, it has probably happened already. If it isn't money, there are any number of things that we can learn to love more than God. Just reviewed the list that we heard in the second reading tonight. But understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty. Well, is that appropriate today? For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless, unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. St. Paul wrote, Therefore let anyone who thinks that he stands take heed, lest he fall. There is a stern warning here. Don't be foolishly confident that you can handle temptation. Don't think that you are strong enough to withstand the attacks of the devil on your own. The reality is this. There is a Judas inside each of us. And if we fail to recognize this, we may fall as he did. That's why God gives us a promise. He says after the warning, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. And that escape is Jesus. That escape has its eyes on Jesus and the cross. And this is where Judas made his final mistake, a mistake that led him away from the way of life into the way of death, both temporal and likely eternal. Judas didn't look to Jesus for the forgiveness of his sin. There is no reason any of us need to follow him there. You have Jesus, and this Lent you have the remainder of these 40 days to fix your eyes upon him. You have a fortnight to watch his rejection, his suffering, and ultimately his death. It won't be pretty. We don't like remembering how Jesus suffered and died. But every single one of us will admit it is necessary because while the outcome for Jesus was brutal and excruciating, the result for us is beautiful, reassuring, and wonderful beyond words. Jesus reminds us still on the night when Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and wine and said, take eat, take drink. Think about it. On the very night of Judas's betrayal, Jesus was working for Judas, for the other disciples, and for you. Remember this, each time you receive the Lord's Supper, Jesus gave you his body and blood for the forgiveness of your sin, all of your sin, even the sin of betrayal especially during this restrictive, tense, and disruptive and scary time. Hunger and thirst for the medicines that God offers you, his holy word, and the Lord's Supper. Your servants of the word are standing by to bring this medicine to you. Judas missed the message because his eyes were looking somewhere else. You have no need to follow him. Fix your eyes on Jesus and depart in the peace and hope that he freely gives. Amen. Now may the peace which passes understanding guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. O Lord, hear my prayer, and let my cry come to you. Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when you were betrayed, you handed over to your church the blessed sacrament of your body and blood. The next day you were handed over by your Father to death on our behalf. Grant that as our faith is strengthened by feasting on you the bread of life, we may never betray you, but steadfastly confess you as our Redeemer. Almighty and everlasting God, you despise nothing you have made and forgive the sins of all who are penitent. Crave in us new and contrite hearts 
that lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, we may receive from you full pardon and forgiveness. Lord Jesus Christ, in the Garden of Gethsemane, you suffered the agony of drinking from the cup of your Father's wrath against our sin, being betrayed by a kiss from one of your own. Give us strength to remain awake as we now wait and watch for your coming again, knowing that the Father's wrath against us has been satisfied by your bloody death and vindicating resurrection. O God, from whom come all holy desires, all good counsels, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, that our hearts may be set to obey your commandments, and also that we, being defended from the fear of our enemies, may live in peace and quietness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.